Hello everybody, it's me, Roku, back with some more content. Starfield's been out for barely a week now, and the online discourse about the game is getting crazier by the day. Some people absolutely love the game, they're gonna name their firstborn child John Starfield or something, whereas other people absolutely hate the game with every single fiber of their being. Now I, the intelligent gamer YouTuber that I am, am gonna add more fuel to the fire. <laughs> Now I'm not going to sit here and tell you that Starfield is a terrible game and that you should not play it, because that is simply not true. Starfield is a relatively high quality product that everyone should try out at least once to see if it's their cup of tea or not. If I had to give the game a rating out of 10, I'd give it a 7 out of 10 because honestly, I think most people who play it will kind of like it. I have to be in the wrong timeline though because IGN gave it the same exact rating and wrote a decent review for once, so <laughs> yeah, congratulations. <laughs> With all that being said, some of the criticism that is being levied against the game is perfectly well founded, and if you look at a lot of it, I think it mostly boils down to one core issue, and that is Starfield masquerades as a role-playing game while failing at almost every single aspect a role-playing game should usually be good at. So without further ado, let's discuss Starfield's biggest problem. Gameplay-wise, I have around 10 hours on the game, which I know is not a lot, and I have admittedly not finished the game yet, but let's just say that my experience so far has not convinced me to just, you know, stay up a few days and finish the game ASAP because I honestly don't enjoy it that much. Now, I'll probably finish it in the next few months, but given that I wanted to make this video now, I've gone ahead and talked to a few people to see whether my opinions stay true for the remainder of the game, and for the most part, they do, so let us proceed. Now before I get into my core issues with the game, I'm going to talk about the state of the game on release, and all the flaws that the game has right now, because it's honestly disingenuous to talk about the game in any critical way without mentioning any of them. As usual, it's a AAA Bethesda game, so there's going to be a ton of performance issues, the game just bugs out of so many people's computers, and you straight up cannot play the game on a hard drive. Now, I do get that we're in the modern era of gaming where SSD space is cheaper than ever. I do remember years ago when I didn't really have the best hardware out there. So by making it so that the game is only playable on SSDs and is 125 gigabits huge, you're basically just like making the game so like hardware elitist exclusive that it honestly sickens me to an extent. You get an entire class of people who just got into gaming and don't have a lot of money who cannot play this game and can't even dream of playing this game ever, so that is not something that I'm a fan of. The in-game heads-up display, or HUD for short, is absolutely terrible. There's no sort of navigation systems like a mini map in games so you can get lost very easily, and it just doesn't do a very good job of giving you information about what's going on. Like, you can be in the middle of a busy firefight, and the HUD won't tell you whether you're taking damage or not unless you keep your eyes on the very small health bar in the corner of the screen while you're trying to aim at the enemy, right? Like, you can just die out of nowhere essentially so many times because the HUD is so trash. The same is the case for the menu, it's really impractical. The impression I get from looking at the HUD and the menus in the game is that the person or the people designing them cared about the aesthetics and the look of it first, while not really caring about the practicality at all and like, you know, not understanding that these things are supposed to help the player play the game, not just be pretty decoration on the screen. The amount of loading screens in the game is absolutely staggering. I'd say like 5-10% of my game time has just been waiting for the game to load when I go to new areas and stuff. And it is a Bethesda game, so I expected it, but because it's like a space exploration game, there's just way more loading screens than any other Bethesda game, so it's just like, it sticks out way more. And the more annoying thing is that Every time you take off with your ship or do a certain action, a certain animation plays, and it plays every single time, and it's unskippable. So you have to go through this 5-10 second copy-paste animation every single time you take off with your ship or land or dock into something, and that's like the main thing you do all the time because you're traveling from planet to planet with your ship. It's just, you go there, the same animation, you go there, the same animation, and it is unskippable. Like, it was cool the first 2-3 times, but after the 200th time, I don't want to see the same thing, but there's that. The game also just pauses when you tab out for some reason, so I'll just like take off with my ship and go to like fast travel to a different planet, tab out, okay, I'll just load up a YouTube video while I play the game, and I'll tap back in to see that the game paused right where I tapped out, and it didn't progress by a single bit. Everything is also slightly clunky and slow, this is especially apparent in combat, like the melee attacks will stun you for a while, and 
crowd control in games like this is just like the worst feeling thing ever. It's just everything just feels like just so smudgy and just not clean and quick at all. Nothing's like crisp. <laughs> But all these criticisms are things that can easily be fixed post-release. Modern video game developers almost always support their game months and months after launch, and Bethesda will do just that. And in the worst case scenario, where Bethesda doesn't really fix most of these nitpicky things, some lone Bulgarian modder is going to single-handedly outdo a AAA company by fixing all of these things in a single fortnight and modding fixes to everything. The issues that I have with the game exist at its core and are very difficult to change unless you rip out significant portions of the game. Starfield does everything it can to pretend to be an RPG. There's progression, there's tons of in-game loot, different armor options, different weapon options, different types of combat styles that you can go for, melee, ranged, pistols, whatever, lots of cutscenes, story moments, companions, dialogue options, just everything you would think an RPG would have. Now, unfortunately, a lot of these things are done in a lackluster way at best, and just completely and utterly terribly at worst. Let's start with the intro, the beginning of the game, how the game is introduced to you. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't want to go through some dingy, uninteresting mine where some people are just having like a normal day-to-day -day conversation. It's like, there's nothing interesting down there in the intro area, and it's just so long with no way to skip it. And they don't do that RPG thing where if you sprint, the characters that are following you will also sprint. No, they walk really slowly, and you can't even AFK like, okay, I'm just going to go make tea while they walk to the area they're supposed to walk to, and I'll just quickly finish this area. No, they will wait for you to actually walk up to them and keep walking to wherever it is they're supposed to go. It's just so boring. Like, what do they think the average game is going to like, W goes forward, rocks. It's like, like, <laughs> like, there's nothing interesting down there. It's boring and unskippable. Just like Fallout 4, just like Fallout 3. And they, I guess, have not learned from their mistakes, have they? I'm going to make a bet with you that within the first month of the game's release, one of the most like downloaded mods on Nexus mods for the game is going to be a way to skip this intro. <laughs> the story doesn't really naturally flow into the rest of the game at all. What I mean by it is that in The Witcher, for example, as Geralt, you are a witcher. The game makes that very clear. So the side quests where you go hunt monsters and stuff make sense for him and you by extension to do. Arthur Morgan is part of a gang. So his whole job is to go rob people, make money for his gang, which is also his family, right? And it makes sense for him to go around, explore, find different ways to make money because that's the name of the game. It makes sense for the character and it makes sense for you. For Starfield, you are just some random guy who was a miner before everything, then some dude shows up after you touch some rock artifact, gives you his ship after not knowing you at all in his life, never has met you once, and now you're a part of some organization just like that, everyone just trusts you instantly. It just doesn't make logical sense. It's not like Fallout New Vegas where, yeah, there is a story in the game, a main quest, but the main quest takes you on a path where there are so many side content around you that you have to try like, to go out of your way to avoid them. Everything's just naturally in your way, and all that side content leads to even more side content that then rats back into the main story to then make a reference like, hey, the side content you did was not useful. It will come back to help you in the future. But that doesn't really happen with Starfield. The main story is completely disconnected from the side quest. So you have to just kind of dissociate yourself from the game and like, okay, I don't care about the story. I'm going to go do the side content, right? It's just not how an RPG should be. You don't stay immersed if you go do your sandbox boxing of just exploring the other content. One of the ways you can tell if an RPG game is great or not is how it reacts to your failures. If you go up to Caesar or Mr. House in New Vegas and tell them that you failed a mission, the game doesn't just implode in on itself. They express their disappointment and you go on with the next mission and the failures of you from that last mission will come back to bite you eventually. It will impact the world and your story to an extent. That is what I love about New Vegas, and that is something that is completely missing in Starfield. The game does not let you fail. At least in the main stories, perhaps it does in some of the later quests, and there's like two, three handful quests that are like really well designed. But from what I gather, the quests are just really one dimensional, and it's just impossible to fail them. I feel like you have to just go out of your way to try to mess them up. And even if you do mess them up, all the characters just immediately love you anyway. It's like you're some sort of 
you know, Mary Sue character that just gets loved by everyone the second you do something slightly right, even though they've never met you in their lives and they're supposed to be skeptical of you, it just doesn't make sense to me. Speaking of the quests, the quests are so boring, at least the main story quests. It's all just chasing these stupid artifacts over and over and over again. And spoiler alert, the ending of the game doesn't really give you all that many answers either. It's just like a smart, if we made the ending like this, then they would play the game again in a new game plan. It's on the same level as your character waking up and thinking everything was a dream or something. It's that bad, in my opinion. The companions are absolutely terrible and just completely worthless. Like, as characters, they're all like one-dimensional. You never really see any character development and they're all just like boring. Like, discount John Marston over here. And in the actual gameplay itself, they're just... Like, like I said, just worthless. Like, in a combat situation, they barely do any damage, they are invulnerable, so they don't even take damage, you don't even have to protect them, and the most use you'll get out of them is have them somehow go forward due to some bug, and then just take the aggro while you kill the enemies, but that won't even happen usually, the enemies will just go straight for you and ignore them. The enemy AI also sucks, in my opinion. They do take cover and throw grenades at some point, but it's like... It's like they're not even trying to kill you. The Combines in Half-Life 2 had way better. Half-Life 1! The Half-Life 1 enemies had better aggro than these guys in Starfield. Now this part is completely insane because they took Fallout, where you basically had three dialogue options, which is yes, yes, but sarcastically, and no. And they thought, hmm, there's too many dialogue options, so they just removed the no. So all you can do is say yes, or yes, sarcastically. Bravo, Vince. The entire space exploration theme, or just the space theme in general, is completely wasted. You think that it's a bit similar to No Man's Sky or something where you can get in your ship and take off from a planet or something, but that could not be further from the truth. Basically speaking, you are at all times confined to a level, whether that be in your ship, in space, or on foot on some planet or something. And to get out of this space, you have to fast travel. You can't go from one planet to another. You can't take off from an area on a planet to outer space. You can't go from one star system to another. You just can't do any of these things. Your main method of traveling from one place to another is fast traveling. And it's not like logically like, oh, you know, if I've been there, it makes sense that I can fast travel there. But if it's an area I've not discovered, then maybe I have to actually fly there and this. No, it's not like that. If you've not discovered an area, you have to fast travel twice instead of just once. It's so crazy. The entire space sort of flight thing, your whole ship, is such a waste of potential. And space fights also are not really that huge of a part of the game, in that there are a few in the game that are a little mandatory, but I think you can just completely skip them, and the most you'll fight people in space is like in the tutorial, basically. The game honestly spits in the face of actual space exploration games like No Man's Sky or Elite Dangerous. It's just Fallout 4 with way more fast traveling. The little things in RPG games that are usually there are also completely missing. Like, this one's a little bit of a subjective thing, but in my opinion, you can tell if a game developer is really passionate about their product or not based on how many of these little things and interactions they've added to the game. Let's say you're playing Red Dead Redemption 2. Now, if you don't know, Red Dead Redemption 2 has a gun cleaning system where if you shoot your gun a lot, it'll eventually get dirty and the stats on it will get worse and that it'll do less damage, it'll you know be less accurate, whatever. Now, you'd think that the gun would fire the same way whether it's dirty or not, but because the game devs are really just like on point with their small details, if you shoot the gun when it's dirty, the sound it'll make and the puff of smoke will be completely different. If you shoot a barrel full of liquid, there won't just be a hole there, there'll be actually fluid coming out of the barrel. When you point your gun at a civilian, they'll get angry or scared, but they will actually react to you pointing your gun at them. All these things on their own, if you isolate them, are small, tiny, insignificant, and they don't really impact the story. But if you get enough of them together, it actually makes the game way more immersive. 
because as gamers, we love to push boundaries in the game in terms of just doing that one thing you're not supposed to do. What happens if I point my gun at this guy? What happens if I shoot this area? And if a game reacts to you doing that properly and is able to keep up with you, then you're all the more immersed into the game as it like just kind of keeps you inside of it and it's like, hey, I can keep up with your craziness. It's just amazing. It also increases the replayability of the game because these small interactions mean that if there's enough of them, it is guaranteed that you won't experience all of them in the same single run. This means that if you play the game again and you see a brand new interaction you've never seen before, it makes the game all the more refreshing and you're encouraged to keep playing it and keep finding more interactions. This is the case with Red Dead Redemption 2. Now, Starfield has none of these little things, or at least like very low numbers of them, because I haven't noticed them while I'm playing it. You point guns at people without them reacting, you can jump into the water without there being any splash or anything. The game does not react to you doing anything out of the ordinary. It's like Bethesda expects the player to be like a CSGO bot playing the game, just like not doing anything crazy, just move from one spot to another and shooting people. This makes the game feel really passionless and soulless, which I mean, given what we've seen from it, is honestly a little expected. Given that I've complained for a while now, you might think that I hate Starfield with my gut, but it is simply not the case. I like Starfield. I'll probably beat it within the next month or so, but I simply don't love it. I am not going to struggle to concentrate in class because I'm constantly thinking about Starfield. I am not going to take a few days off work so I can rush through Starfield and play to completion because I'm just addicted to the game and the content it has to give me. I am not going to think about Starfield after I've beaten it, I'm just going to forget it as if it never happened. A game like Witcher, in comparison, is an amazing open world RPG game that completely envelops you. As a metaphor, it's basically like a five course meal where it immerses you from the start, completely just grabs you instantly, takes you along for a ride, and is a game that you will remember for years on after. And honestly, me talking about it right now is proof because the game came out in 2015 and people are still talking about it and mentioning it as one of the best RPG games of all time because it truly is that. As opposed to a full course meal though, Starfield is like a packet of crisps. Sure, every single quest you go on, every single item that you hunt down or the gun you want is nice, entertaining and fun, but it's still a packet of crisps. The flavor is there, the taste is there, but it's brief and it's gone instantly as soon as you're done with it. It's not a full-on experience, it's not immersive, it doesn't take you with itself on a journey. It's just something to occupy your time. Now I'm not going to tell you that your feelings for the game are invalid if you love the game. Maybe you love the freedom that comes with a sandbox game. Maybe you hate big, long, drawn-out stories, or you have such low time to play games that all you can enjoy is basically like a 30-minute or 1-hour quick quest, or like a hunt for a specific item. If you're a person like that, then, you know, Godspeed, do whatever you want to do. But keep in mind, the game is still pretending to be an RPG. The RPG aspect of it is very difficult to avoid. You have to go out of your way to get like away from it. You have to get like a mod, which will be made soon, I hope, to just completely rip out every single RPG aspect of the game that's done poorly so you can enjoy it as like a pure sandbox experience. All the criticisms, I'm afraid, are valid, and it's why the game is getting so much hate on the internet and from game reviewers like IGN and I suppose me in this case. A lot of my complaints and criticisms here just apply one to one to Fallout 4. The dialogues in Fallout 4 are terrible, the main story in Fallout 4 absolutely sucks, all the factions make no sense and everything's just completely stupid, the intro is just long and annoying in Fallout 4, all the characters or the companions you get are completely one dimensional and boring aside from one I guess, and the main way to have fun in Fallout 4 just like Starfield is to ignore the main story quests and just go have your own fun in the sandbox world that Bethesda has created for you because that's what they're good at. The Sanctuary is also a nice activity you have in Fallout 4, something to just come back to the game to constantly. And honestly, if you think about it, a lot of these things can also be applied to Fallout 3. <laughs> If you've been around Bethesda for a while and that you've played Bethesda games and understand how they make their games, you could very easily predict that this is exactly what Starfield would be. Fallout 4 with a fresh new coat of paint. It would never breach into the goated category of games and would at best be an 8 out of 10. Bethesda is amazing at making sandbox games they can just get lost in and have a wonderful time, but they are terrible at making RPGs. So therefore, Starfield's biggest issue was the fact that Bethesda made it. My name is Roku, and thank you for watching.